Welcome to Your Daily Dose, a devotion ministry of the Faith Baptist Church of Franklin and Middletown, Ohio. Thanks for joining us each weekday as we share God's Word with you. It's your daily prescription for all that ails you. And now, Your Daily Dose. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Your Daily Dose. My name is Bob Nolan. Glad to have you with us this morning. Uh, many, many moons ago, uh, Brother Doug Krause, he's a, uh, for those of you who, who don't know, and I'm finding that there's people watching these uh these devotions from all over the world, uh, people that uh, sometimes we know, sometimes people we don't even know. Uh, so it, it bears uh, to, to explain that he is the, our youth pastor at our church. Uh, but Brother Doug, uh, when he was in school, albeit many, many, many moons ago, his math teacher asked him a question. The question was, if you had one dollar and you asked your father for another, how many dollars would you have? Brother Doug answered one dollar. His teacher shook her head, said, you don't know your math. Brother Doug looked at her and said, you don't know my father. Over the last few days, uh, I think since the, uh, since the presidential debate uh, that went down Tuesday night, I've, I've been paying a little bit closer attention to the news and to, to politics and uh, really taking a, a closer look at the take on things going on in our world through the lens of other people besides myself. You know, we tend to look at things through our own personal lens, but I've been paying special attention to generations younger than I, uh, the millennials and, and, and different folks, uh, and I found something very interesting, and that is that there is a complete and total lack of understanding of God in our culture. Uh, just yesterday I spent a couple hours going back and forth with someone I don't even know on the, the internet, on, out on that Twitter thing, uh, just talking about God. Because to, to this guy, God is, is this uh, old man who's vengeful and angry and He's sitting up on a cloud, just striking people down all day, throwing lightning bolts, and, and just ruining all of his fun, mind you, which really is his sin. Uh, he, we're just ruining his time here on earth uh, in favor of, you know, God's, God would rather have him uh, walk around like a monk all day long singing a funeral dirge. And, you know, I told him, I said, you don't know my father. Psalm 18 is a great passage of scripture. And uh, one of the things I like so much about it is really it's David's uh, retrospect of God's greatness. Actually, that'd, that'd probably be a pretty good title for Psalm 18. But when I get down to verse 30, I think David really sums up God. And the unique part is, is the point of view here. David did not uh, write this psalm necessarily as a, as a song to, uh, to gratify man and man's taste in music and different things. No, this song was sung directly to Jehovah himself. Verse 30, David wrote, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. Now, David first points out here that God is perfection. I mean, who else can be perfect? Sure, yeah, I know you're saying, look, Bob, I already know this. I already know that God is great. God is perfect. You know what? It never hurts to remind ourselves of that fact. David, well, you know, David was a man after God's own heart, but he sure did make his own share of mistakes. What is it that set him apart? I think that what, what set him apart was his continual desire. No matter what he did that went against God's will, whatever he did that went against God's way, David always had a heart that was pointed toward God. I mean, David was a man of vast imperfection. And let's face it, so are we. David here in his retrospection summed up pretty much all his years of life with the single statement that God's way is perfect. David was a man after God's own heart because he demonstrated his faith and he was committed to following the Lord. Now, 
his faith was tested on a grand scale, and if we're going to be honest about it, he failed at many points. But you know, after his sin, he sought and received the Lord's forgiveness. In the final analysis, David loved God's law and sought to follow it. But you know what? Most of all, he understood that his father, in contrast to him, was perfection. Secondly, David notes that his father is prevention. David wrote here that the word of the Lord is tried. Now, that doesn't mean that someone just gave it a try. What he is meaning here is, is tried like silver refined in a, in a furnace. The doctrines of God are glorious. His precepts are pure. His promises are faithful. His, his entire revelation is full of grace, full of truth. And the truth is, David had tried it. Thousands have tried it. We have tried it. And you know what? It has never, ever failed. David, in his retrospection, realized something here. Whenever he would stray from God's word, stray from God's way, from God's will, <laughs> David, the, the, the adulterer, the murderer, the deceiver, the man after God's own heart, yes, David was all of those things. But here his retrospection led him to understand something. And that was that he should have just always followed God. Because you see, God's ways are the best ways. If we follow him instead of our flesh, we will be prevented from those consequences of our sin. Now, I mean, I could go on, I could go on for hours, like the first point of one of Pastor's sermons, about what happened to David as a result of, of his sin. I mean, that that's multiple sermons by itself. But let's just say that he who ruined the family of Uriah, he who found his own family ruined, and, and frankly, it's almost, it's almost as if David had to restore tenfold for the life that he had taken. What David's saying here is if I had only done it God's way, could have prevented a lot of this. See, his way is prevention. And lastly, he notes that his father is protection. At the end of verse 30, he writes that he is a buckler to all those that trust in him. And I, and I really love that word buckler. Um, it probably bears a little bit of, of uh, explanation for those who may not know what that is. Um, there is uh, a buckler is something of course, that, that we don't use in our world today. Uh, a buckler is a shield. Now, it is not the same size as a as a full body shield. Uh, it is much smaller. It's able to be handheld. It was a it was a shield that was designed for all day protection. Usually combined with not a a full size sword, but a something like a dagger, something along those lines. Uh, because a shield, the, the big full shield, was something that you would have only carried into battle. You wouldn't carry it around with you all the time because it was so heavy. It was hard to manage, uh, and it was very difficult to manage a shield and try to fight someone with a sword at the same time. It just wasn't something that you carried everywhere. I love those little truths that you find in Scripture, and sometimes in the places you least expect it, because the word buckler here shows us something. God's not just a help during the battle. But he's with us at every moment of our life. David, in one word, gave us the timeless truth that our Father is complete protection. I, I, you know, the older I get, the I guess I, I start to appreciate different pieces of Scripture more than others. And I think it's because I love the passages that come from the latter years of life, when people like David uh, and Solomon is, is another one that comes to mind, when they look back on their life, the power that retrospection brings. You know, the poor person, poor fellow that I've been uh, d just conversing with over the last day or so, he just doesn't know my father. 
you know, for some practical application here, and I, look, you've probably already gotten there. This is not exactly complicated theology, but David took a lot of wrong turns because he forgot what he knew about his father. You know, as we go about our lives, we have to remember God is perfection. God, he is our prevention. He is our protection, not just in retrospect, but in all aspects of our life continually. Well, it's been great to be with you this morning, and I want you to uh, make a special note to be in prayer for our revival that starts Sunday morning at 10 a.m. The, 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 the tent has been pitched out there. Uh, we've got everything. We've made a lot of plans over the last few weeks, done a lot of work to make sure everything goes off over there. Uh, Dr. R.B. Olet will be with us preaching. We're going to have Jim and Melissa Brady with us singing on Sunday. We're going to have a great time and get refreshed and revived uh, in the Lord. So I encourage you not only to be in prayer for that, but to be in your place Sunday morning. And men, tomorrow morning, Saturday, we have a prayer uh, uh, breakfast and Bible study that's going to start at 9 a.m. You don't want to miss it. It's always a great time of uh, fellowship and, most importantly, uh, studying God's Word together. So I encourage you to come and be a part. All right, have a blessed day in the Lord. We'll see you Sunday morning. This has been your Daily Dose, a ministry of Faith Baptist Church. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today and click the bell next to the button to sign up for email notifications each time we live stream or release a new video. To learn more about faith, please visit our website, fitinatfaith.com, for more information about our church. Have a great day in the Lord.